Okay, so we are ready to start. Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to welcome all of you on our HR analytics course, or someone could call it uh, people analytics, and you will see why. So today we have class number one, introduction to analytics, and why business actually needs it and approaches to analytics. So this is the very first class, the introduction, and let's start. Why would someone need to learn analytics? Because HRs who know how to work with people analytics become valuable partners for their business and tend to earn more than their peers. And you know, nowadays such job titles as HR business partner, people partner, talent acquisition partner means that you can deal with analytics. It's not just like to be a partner because someone trusts you. You are a partner because you understand the business and you use the same business approaches that other departments use. Like if we are talking about marketing or finances or logistics, of course, they do use analytics to make decisions, to analyze the situation, to discover some insights and like to ju ju just for work. And that's why if HR... I mean, human resources, like anyone in human resources, like any job, starting from associate uh, or recruiter or learning and management, um, uh, learning and development specialist, they all need to know analytics. And you will see why, actually. Uh, this course has the website. So this is the address of the website. And let me introduce myself. My name is Mike Pritula. And I started my career with Alpha Bank, which is now Sense Bank. And I was a recruiter and trainer, but being a recruiter, I was asked to deal with people turnover. I was asked to introduce exit interview and make some calculations just to understand why actually people leave and what specifically bank could do with that. So my first people analytics or HR analytics journey started with actually turnover analytics. And my reports were so useful that the president of Alpha Bank asked me to come uh, to his meeting and discuss with him what's going and how we can solve the problem. And for me, being like a junior, junior person, junior HR, it was a big honor to talk to such a big guy in the company, like the president of the bank. Then when I worked at Starlight Media, it was STB TV channel. I worked with analytics. I when I when Actually, when I joined the company, I was asked to start the satisfaction, satisfaction survey and to analyze the whole situation in the bank, like to analyze what's happening in people's mind, uh, what's going on how we can target some HR problems with different solutions. And it was like a big project because I think at the moment we have 1,000 employees and it was almost like the first survey that ever been run, uh, run in the company. And then I did a lot of analytics with payroll data, with uh, recruitment, of course, uh, satisfaction survey and like some even some business data, because I was asked to prove that we need to increase our payroll and uh, headcount, and that it will help uh, to grow the business. That's why I needed to calculate some data to show that people growth is not spending, but rather investments. Then I worked at Wargaming Company, also had some big projects like Total Rewards, big uh, audit and analytics, um, salary data analytics, um, people engagement analytics, something like that. Then it was Preplanned Ideals, again, different kind of analytics. And then I helped People Force all-in-one HR system to build their system. I was like a consultant. And now I teach my students and my Pritula Talent Academy. So it's about me. Like 
I started in 2005. At the moment, it's like 18 years of human resources experience. Of course, I did a lot of different projects in different countries because starting from wargaming, wargaming prep play deals, they are international companies, uh, different industries, uh, different positions, different roles, different projects. So I have something to share with my students. Okay. In my work and in my uh, classes and my courses, I use I always use best practices because I know they invest a lot of money and time and efforts uh, to develop great solutions. They do a lot of survey, a lot of researches. So I always study them and incorporate in my courses so I can be sure that my courses combined with my personal experience and with the best practices. And um, before we start, I would like to tell you about our homework that we have in this course. All completed homework from this course qualify for the diploma of completion of this course like this that you see on your screen. And we issue our diploma on specific online platform that are used by a lot of popular companies, like more than 1,000 companies are using this platform, like Google, like Zendesk, like Slack, like Harvard, and so on. And the course program consists of 10 classes. Today, we are starting from introduction to analytics and why business needs it, and some approaches to analytics. Then next class, we will continue with uh, segmenting data and finding insights. <coughs> On class number three, we will talk about assessing employee lifetime value, which is very important. And the I would say the most modern approach to deal with people analytics, ROI and increasing employee lifetime value. Okay. Then class number four will be about building an employee life cycle and evaluating it. We will talk about employee uh, journey map and how to, how to deal with it, how to analyze and how to improve. Then class number five will be for recruitment analytics. We will learn the funnel approach. Uh, we will learn the recruitment audit checklist and so many other things. Then we will continue with analyzing employee performance analytics. And we will talk about such a thing like a people activation score. At class number seven, we will talk about loyalty and turnover analytics, like uh, how to analyze the attrition. Class number eight, using surveys for analysis and prioritizing focus. So we will talk about how to develop uh, these kind of surveys, how to use them, how to make them effective. Class number nine, analytics for the advanced regression analysis. And class number 10 is about making predictions or forecasts and conducting experiments. So this is a whole course, quite a big one and a lot of tools, but I think it has everything you need in terms of people analytics or HR analytics, right? So today class program is following. We will start about talking what is actually people analytics. Uh, then we will discuss how analytics solves business problems through well-formulated questions, which is very important, right? What data about people is necessary and useful for business? We will learn some most popular HR metrics. How to upgrade the HR and the company with analytics? How to move from just metrics to something deeper? How to convince management of the importance of analytics? We will study ABC model, then how to improve decision-making in the company with help of analytics. And we will see old and new model of working with analytics. So let's start and let's uh, start talking about what is people analytics actually, okay? In people analytics, we, we actually have two words, uh, people and analytics. People is the biggest investment of any company. Like companies, they spend billions or even more dollars on people every month. The biggest companies, they spend, of course, uh, more. And analytics change every function in the company and changed Every, I, I would say almost every job, right? So it started from finances. Of course, finances is, is about money, it's about numbers. 
you can't deal with finances without any analytics. Then logistics. Of course, uh, having international logistics, international supply chain, uh, delivery and everything. Of course, you need some analytics to better organize everything. Then marketing. Where, when marketing went online from being offline, it became more and more that driven because previously, of course, they relied on data and they did some data gathering, but without being online, it was, I would say it was less with analytics. It was more with people opinion, with creativity uh, and everything like, you know, this film, Mad Men, Madison Avenue uh, marketers. Uh, but now marketing is all about analytics. And of course, sales. Sales could be with basic analytics like sales figures. And now with this kind of tools like HubSpot, like Salesforce and others, they have much more data for analytics. And now it's time for staff analytics because HR is not about psychology anymore. Like I remember those days, uh, 20 years ago, only psychologists were invited to be HR managers. But now, actually, I have my banking education. I have banking master diploma. I'm a banker, actually, by my education. And my uh, first job was to be a banking manager. But now I work in HR. I, I consider myself as HR, right? So it's not about psychology. Of course, I know a lot about psychology. I like psychology, I like people behavior, like team dynamics and everything, but it's not about psychology anymore. It's also about numbers. It's also about analytics. So what's about? About making better decisions about people than based on mere instincts or intuition. About creating great business results because we are all here to make better business results, business about money, right? So we can do whatever we want, but if we don't add the value to the business, we are useless. About creating a great place for employees to work. Of course, it's also about people and about attracting, engaging and retaining best talents in the company. And it's about linking people decisions to business strategy. So that's what about people analytics. And people analytics, that's why it's a broad field with a lot of with a lot of things to learn, like human resources management, behavioral science, of course, technological systems, and statistics for starters. Business are made up of people. And nowadays, even more than before, because those companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, and others, the main assets asset of those companies are people, not machinery, not uh, soil, not, you know, not buildings, right? Not boards, just people. They work for the company, do things for other people like customers, and business decisions about people like who to hire, where to find them, how much to pay, what benefits to provide, who to promote, have a huge impact on the financial success of the company. And I think that this impact is one of the biggest ones among all decisions. So it's very important, right? Most companies, in most companies, people rely on intuition to make decisions about people. On what other companies are doing, at the same time, other business decisions are made based on data, such as which project to invest in, which is strange, right? And what is people analytics? It is the application of evidence to management decision making. And this is a modern approach in HR because now in HR we say data-driven decision, right? So it's not just, I know, psychological decisions or intuition decisions, data-driven decisions. How analytics solves business problems through properly framed questions? Actually, this kind of questions we will be talking about is very important. 
because what you formulate as a question leads you to what you receive as a result of analytics. Like all disciplines of business analysis, people analytics offer companies ways to answer to answer questions like impart new knowledge, solve problems, evaluate the effectiveness of solutions and improve them further. First, it's about providing new knowledge, right? So analytics gives the company new knowledge about people. Knowledge come in many forms. Something you know, you know it. Sometimes you know you don't know something. Sometimes you don't know that you know something. And sometimes, which is the worst one, you don't even know that there are something important you don't know yet. And it could lead you to a lot of <coughs> losses, to a lot of losses. Ignorance can cost you millions of dollars a year. My case study at one of the company I worked at, it was a gaming company. The cost of asking the question is $10 million annually. It was a time when something was happening in the company. People started to leave the company with no reason. Um, our recruitment force was, efforts was uh, decreasing for some reason, no why. Uh, company didn't know why. And company thought that we could solve all our problems with just another pay increase and huge bonuses. And company was going to spend a lot of money on bonuses and salary increase just trying to solve the people attrition and people recruitment problem. But I propose to go another way. I propose to do EVP analysis and understand if the problem is really in payroll or somewhere in other systems, okay? So I started this EVP survey and I asked our employees by their opinion in our company, this EVP, this EVP components worse than in other IT companies, the same or maybe better than in other IT companies. And I realized that the main reason why people started disliking the company was about communication processes in the company. You see that 40% said that this communication process worse than other IT companies. And only 14% said that it's better because maybe they came from even worse companies with even worse uh, communication processes. But the salary that we were talking about was not the reason they leave because salary actually by their opinion was much better than in other companies. Bonuses, I would say it was not a problem because here we have 29, here we have 27 and then a lot of here like the same. So if we were spending another $10 million a year on salaries, it was just, I don't know, just nonsense, just a spending, not an investment. And with this survey, I showed the company that we need to solve these communications and processes. And when I analyzed the ENPS results, so I just divided people by detractors and the rest by ENPS. And we, uh, we saw that most of our detractors was caused by, again, communication process in the company. By their opinion, it was um, the worst situation. Not the, Again, not the salary. So it was a time that people analytics showed us that we didn't know something important that we don't know yet, okay? Uh, and here the anal an analysis of the survey just for you to show what was the conclusion. So even a simple survey can open up something for the company that the company doesn't know. Problem solving, the simplest, is to analyze the turnover rate in order to reduce it. Like, I think actually every company deals with people attrition. 
Like almost every company, they want to reduce the attrition. They want to analyze why people leave. Because, you know, when people leave, you don't like it. You would like that people stay with you, right? Because you want to be a great employer. You want people to like your company, even maybe to love your company. But when people leave, it's something that you don't like. And again, another example of my work, it was Esther by TV channel. I was dealing with hiring problems and I was hired as head of uh, recruitment and onboarding department. But very soon I understood that we not only have our recruitment problems, we also have our attrition problems because when your team of recruiters, let's say, close 50 vacancies a month and half of them are caused by attrition, it's not the way you were expecting to work with, right? Because uh, you want to help people, you, you, you want to help your company grow, not just to uh, feed its attrition. And when you see that a lot of vacancies are just the attrition replacements, you try to understand why actually people leave. Why you spend so many time and efforts on just replacing people, not on hiring new talents. And my analysis of that company showed that we have one department with a huge attrition, like 141% of attrition rate a year. It's like, it was awful. And I started from this department. I met the department manager and together with the CEO, we started the discussion and analysis. Why people leave the department? what we could do to reduce attrition. And actually, within the half of the year, we reduced this attrition, uh, I think somewhere to 40% a year. And it helped us, at, like it saved us a lot of hours of working for recruiters. Then evaluate the effectiveness of solutions and improve the further. Small experiments can be conducted and results measured to select the best solutions. Actually, in business, this is called A-B testing. We can do A-B testing in our uh, recruitment evaluation tools. So we can apply different evaluation tools and analyze which of them help us to forecast employee performance better. Yes? So you can compare data from different units and find dependencies between them it's called correlation analysis that we will learn on our course. And the effectiveness of candidate assessment can be analyzed by comparing their evaluations in the interview and in the paper later. And this kind of correlations is very popular in HR. So for example, Gallup, the most famous consulting company, they have the Gallup Q12 questionnaire about employee engagement and this is built on correlation analysis of which factor of work has uh, the correlation between the employee performance. So talking about people analytics, we deal with data sources. And of course, we have lots of data sources in our work. It could be employee resource planning system, could be human resources information system, payroll systems, applicant tracking systems, learning management systems, performance management systems, comparative market salary surveys, if your company buys one, employee survey, I would say the easiest way to gather some data. Email and calendar system data, we call it metadata. Could be corporate intranet, job boards, social media comments, and state census and department of labor data. So we have so many different sources of data. data Actually, having data is not a problem. How we use the data is what makes data useful for the company. What data about people is needed and useful to business? Here, we will have, like, I would say it's almost 50 HR metrics that are the most popular and they are among the most useful ones. So you may use it for your purposes. But how to use it, we will talk later, right? Because, you know, 
talking about people analytics or HR analytics, it's not just about knowing some HR metrics and knowing how to calculate it. No, of course. It's rather about how to choose proper metrics and to use them to make proper conclusions and some action plans, okay? So here are just a set of different HR metrics and I added for what purpose, for what purpose, you may use this metric. So let's start from this like an example. Revenue per employee. All types of employees, not only full-time employee or full-time equivalent. So it's the result of dividing total revenue of the company by the total number of employees. <clears throat> For what purpose we use it? Evaluate overall employee performance to compare between businesses, years, industry, if you have your industry data and so on. Also, some metrics are being calculated by FTE, full-time employee or full-time equivalent. If your company uh, have a lot of different types of uh, employees and all of them are not full-time employees, then you may want to recalculate to FTE and then use FTE as the metric to calculate other metrics. Okay, so the description is here. It's important to take into account not only full-time employees, but all kinds of employees. So in the last form formula, we didn't just take into account the staff, but sometimes it's helpful to look only at the full-time employees. Sometimes this is a shareholder requirement, but it's important to understand this, that this figure can be easily manipulated because you can move people out of the state, for example, Janitors can be outsourced or, pro, or cleaners, right? Profit per employee, it's the total profit divided by total number of employees and the same for FTE. Overtime per employee, salary per employee. This one is very important because and very popular because we use this metric in different calculations like the cost of attrition, wage of an of one FTE labor cost as a percentage of revenue, labor costs or as a, as a percentage of total costs, and so on and so forth. I just uh, <clears throat> skip all these HR metrics. It's like it's been here uh, like a library for yourself, so you may pick it at any time you want, but we will move to more useful information of how to apply HR analytics and people analytics uh, to your work, okay? So just show you that we have a lot of them and you may choose which one you want. So I was talking about people analytics and HR analytics that it's not about just HR metrics. How to upgrade HR in the company with help of analytics. This is um, the chart of degree of analysis. And I would say this, uh, is, 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 is about uh, business uh, usefulness of people analytics and here the degree of difficulty of course something is more difficult than others so regular reports they are easy to build i would say there is no analysis and the use of these reports are not so big and they just answer the question what happened then a little bit more difficult and it applies a little bit of analysis and it makes uh, more business use of it is reports on requests or ad hoc requests, ad hoc reports. The answer here, how much and how often? So it's not just the reporting of data, it's about explaining the data. Then the next level is about statistical analysis. It gives the answer to the question, why did this happen? Then it's about forecasting. What happens if the trend continues, which is very important because only with forecasting you can do something. You can't revert the past, but you may change the future. Then it's about predictive modeling. What is the most likely to happen? And we will talk about predictive modeling at the last uh, webinar. And the final one is about optimization. What could happen in the best case scenario? So if you want to upgrade your people analytics in the company, 
you have to move on from the basic people analytics to the next level, okay? So how to convince management of the importance of analytics? You need to do that sometimes just to hire another people analytics person or the first people analytics person. Sometimes you need to do that and to do to do that just to buy some tools for people analytics or just the tools for HR work because having such a tool like People Force Human Resources System provides you with much more data than living without this uh, system. And sometimes we need uh, to convince our management just to pay attention to some people problems and uh, to invest some money or maybe time into some projects like attrition turnover, attrition reduction projects, uh, employee engagement prison projects, and so on. So how to bring the attention to people analytics? You may see this uh, connection between employee results, what kind of people do we need to be successful, on process results, what are we supposed to be good at, then customer results, how should we work with clients, and finally financial results, what we'll do for our shareholders. It's based on... Um, balance scorecard approach uh, you may refer to balance scorecard because if you want to improve financial results results you need to think not about money but also about customers processes and employees and that is the way how we improve the company also we may use abc model abc model refers to antecedents, behaviors and consequences they are all connected. Antecedents, any stimul or conditions that precede the behavior. Questions here are what causes discomfort, what prompts action, then the result of this is a behavior, behavioral response of people. What are they doing? What do you want them to do? And then consequences of this behavior, any stimuli or conditions that occur after the behavior. What do they get out of it, the feedback? So you may apply this model to any uh, analytics data, to any situation you want to showcase. And the description of this model is following. Antecedents, that's why we need analytics, may consist of previous experiences and feelings of the managers you are trying to pursue it. Sometimes it has to do with the pain they feel toward employees. Sometimes executives move forward because of the observations they make of another company forced to analyze people. Part A gets the process started, but it's usually not enough to see it through. Consequences represent what the people you are trying to persuade want to happen. What are the consequences of people participating or not participating in the analysis? And the most importantly, consequences must be significant enough to put people through the cost of hard work B. The middle letter B refers to the behavior that is needed to move from precedents to consequences. <clears throat> Members of your leadership team may need to change the way they make decisions. They may need to invest some money in some systems, or they may need to be willing to let you collect some data. Given that B involves risks and some changes, A and C should be very compelling. Options to think about. What problem can analytics solve for the person you want to engage when you are talking to some of managers, let's say? What need of the person you want to persuade will people analytics fulfill? What goals can people analytics accomplish to help the person you want to persuade? What pain will people analytics relieve? Questions for managers. How do you recognize that this is a problem? What measurements indicate that there is a problem? What is the situation at the moment? How would you like it to be? What do you think is causing the problem? What causes do you think are most important? Where exactly does this problem manifest itself? Who is the most affected by this problem? Who is affected the least? When does this problem occur most often? It's just a universal set of questions that you may ask to managers 
And actually, having some problems in the company, some issues, is the best way to start your people analytics journey. So if you want to do some people analytics in the company, try not to start from just HR metrics. Try not to start just by picking top 10 useful HR metrics and then calculate them. It's hard to bring the attention to metrics and you will be losing to go this way. If you want to bring the attention to people analytics, if you want to start using it for the company uh, value increase, try to start from problems. It could be people problem, recruitment problem, attrition problem, engagement problem, loyalty problem, and something like that. People behavior problem. So find some problems in the company and then address them with people analytics and not just calculate something by but also involve people, uh, managers, into this discovery. Start talking to managers, start asking questions, start showing them some data and discuss the data. So the idea here is not just to make a report and put on the table to these managers. No, it's more about discussion that leads to some changes, that leads to some actions to be taken, okay? People's key concerns, your competitiveness in recruitment and retention, voluntary employee turnover, level of employee engagement, likelihood of dismissal. That was, I was mentioned in my speech, right? So it's just for you to remember the most important directions that you have to focus on. How to improve your company's decision-making with analytics? These decisions, what type of people to hire, when to hire people, how to hire people, how many people to hire, who to hire, how much to pay, how to reward, what to train, when to train, how to train. You may improve with good analytics. Old and new model of working with analytics. Reporting what has been done is a past approach of analytics. And predictive which are analytics that I mentioned before, is a new way how we work with analytics. It's about predicting the ability to create value by anyone, anytime, business leaders, HR employees. Predicting employee value, for example, right? So it's about predicting organization's key asset, employee's ability and desire to create shared value by working efficiently and creatively. Actions and results limit specific areas for development and continuously monitor investments and their impact on results. Artificial intelligence. Actually, we are going to talk about artificial intelligence because with ChatGPT, you may apply some analytics by artificial intelligence. As you may know, you may send file to ChatGPT and ask about some analytics, and I will show you how to do that. It's very interesting. So predictive analytics utilize machine learning techniques and existing business sensors. Zeus, the method does not require constant human support and is available 24 seven to the customer. Areas of applications of predictive analytics in HR could be recruitment and selection of personal. And here are some of ideas. Personal development and again, some of ideas and staff retention again, some of ideas. It's the starting point for you to read about, to think about, and actually to start doing some people analytics. Now the homework for those who are in our course, in our group. If you are not, if you are still thinking, just join our course and you'll be very good in people analytics within just 10 webinars, including this one. So homework for my students is following. Describe why HR analytics is necessary for your company, but not just your opinion. Imagine that you are going to talk to the CEO and show this homework to the CEO. What are the top five metrics you count currently? What are the other five metrics you would like to count? And what questions would you like to find answers to with analytics? Like what kind of problems maybe you have in the company and you won't address them with analytics. Now the book. 
I highly recommend this book uh, by Laszlo Bok. Work rules. It's about uh, Google HR system. Actually, Laszlo, before Google, he was McKinsey consultant, and he applied McKinsey approach to everything he did in the company. He did like a lot of analytics, and this book has a lot of case studies how Google applies analytics to its job. So I highly recommend this book. It's a very interesting book to learn from. And that's it for today. Next class, we will talk about segmenting data and finding insights. Thank you for your attention. I'm waiting your homework. And for those who are not on the course, I'm waiting for you to participate in this course. See you soon. Bye. Thank you again.